Hey guys, what's up? I just wanted to tell you guys right now that the video quality and audio isn't the best, but this is going to be the Q&A for the thing. So if you guys enjoy it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy the Q&A with my girlfriend. All right, so how nervous are you actually right now? <laughs> you nervous? Like, I'm slightly less nervous than I was like three minutes ago, but still pretty nervous. Hi guys, we're doing a Q&A that you guys asked us questions. There's not a lot of them, but we're gonna go through them. No, I also didn't memorize half of my Okay. Um, this is sort of the easy one, dream vacation. Now I understand, what, what, what is your actual dream vacation? I think Japan's mine. Is that actually yours or do you have a different one? That's a great question because I have like places I want to visit, but as far as like an actual vacation goes, I feel like a dream vacation would probably be to like Florida or Hawaii or some tropical place where you can actually go swimming in like the lake but it's warm versus being on the west coast all the water the ocean it's freezing cold so i mean you can go run in the ocean but it's it's not the same thing so your dream vacation also, is florida somewhere where the water is clear and warm why can't you just go to california because there's too many people there florida does not have enough people i don't know hawaii does not have enough people hawaii's Hawaii is fine. <laughs> Obviously mine's Japan. I want to go to like the Pokemon Center. I want to go to the Digital Art Museum. I wouldn't even mind going to like the, um, what is it called? Disneyland of Japan. That's oh, yeah. Or just, I wouldn't want to go to like Shibuya. I would want to go to Mount Fuji, all that stuff. It would be really fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, um... Did you say the Cherry Blossom Festival? Well, yeah, Cherry Blossom Festival is also one that I want to do. But that's like end of March. Beginning of May? April. April. Where's me? Yeah, I don't know. How's life? How's life? How's life, Elena? Honestly, pretty good. Like, people ask me, uh, you know, like, how you doing? How are you working towards your dreams? And I'm kind of like, I've always had this dream to, like, you know, work in a zoo or work with animals or something like that. And I'm not doing that. But since I met this guy, kind of had a different kind of dream. And that's partly just like, you know, living with the person I love and just doing like daily life together and so technically I get to live like one of my dreams like every day so why is that so sweet I feel so good like I feel happy like most all of the time and people are like oh like why aren't you taking classes to go towards like you know working with animals that's me, like by the way I I work at a job well yeah other people tell me that too though oh. um I work at a job at a hospital and that's not necessarily what I thought I wanted to do, but I really enjoy it. So I enjoy my job, I enjoy my life outside of work, and I'm just, you know, really happy. And eventually I'll get towards my other dream, but like right now I'm just really, really comfortable. The opposite? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've said it a lot lately, but I've just been in a rut. I don't know. I've been waking up late. I've been not wanting to get out of bed. I've been staying up. I'm mean, not late. I've been staying up, staying up the same amount of time. Um, but I mean, life's well. I, I mean, like you said, I live with you, which is pretty fantastic. I'm able to do what I love to do, upgrade it now with this camera, with the new PC, with everything like that. Like, I think I'm making strides towards my goal. And, um, you know, I, I feel like every day you gotta go towards your goals no matter what. And so I would say life's okay, honestly. I, I wouldn't want anything different right now. It's not like I want to wake up tomorrow and be a millionaire. I feel like I want to work for that. I don't want it easy, really. I know it's different for you. I'd be okay with that. You'd be okay with that? I'm fine with how we are, but I mean, I, I mean. Okay. What do you? Just, yeah, you have more opportunities to do whatever you wanted to, or to like you know, invest in your friends that are like pursuing their passions. But like you know, you just gotta see their dreams like. I don't know. Yeah. You'd just be able to be more supportive of them too if you were like a millionaire. But how would he be more supportive? Like, because in order to get people started on their vision, like if their vision is to like um, do their own home business, especially now with COVID, it is so hard to like start your own home business because it costs so much money and nobody. I would feel like that's a hard slope though. Because if you really think about it, I actually, I talked about this in today's video. Um, you can be saying yes, yes, yes all your life, but as soon as you say you're a millionaire, say you're famous, 
and say somebody wants something from you and you keep doing it, keep doing it, and then that one time you say no, you're instantly the enemy. You're instantly the one that doesn't help others. You're instantly the one that person that doesn't do much for these people, even though you have receipts of helping others. But when you're in that top tier list, everyone just wants to see you fall. Not everyone, but like I just think and that starting a business like that. Um, yeah, you can help with money and stuff like that, but say if it flops, most likely they're gonna ask for more. Or say it somewhat starts working, but they know that, oh, if I had just had this thing, this thing, this thing, and then you say yes, 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 and yes, then it's kind of like they're just kind of taken from there. I just think it depends on what kind of friends you have. You exactly. know, if you if you know that you have maybe one or two friends that are really solid yeah. core friends that are very selfless and just wanting to help other people, and you're like, hey, like I also want to make you able to help people even more and like I, I like the dream you have it's not like oh they want to do whatever they want to do when it's some like weird thing that you don't understand but you know I might as well invest in it because I have the money like you know if you really believe in that person and you really believe in their dream yeah then being able to support it is is amazing and such a great like I just feel like you can support without money you can you can it's I feel just, like that's the best support that's my opinion. That's fine. I love you. I love you too. Um, okay, how did you get such a nice job? I think that's mainly for me. I don't know. I just kind of applied for a job and got it. She's a CNA. It's not that great of a job. It's not, but it is nice paying. I mean, <laughs> you actually had to go through like college and thing like that. A little bit. How, how was your college time? I loved it. I took a few, you know, terms of classes in order to get into the position I am in the hospital right now. And I love learning, but usually when I do learning, I don't do like anything else at the same time because the classes that you gotta take are like, you know, really intense. And so you have to like cut out your friends, cut out like working, cut out like everything else just to focus on studying and making sure that you're getting an A because if you don't get an A, then you like don't pass. So you have to be like always 90% or higher on every single test you take, which is every day you go to class there's a test or something like that. And it's just, it's intense, but also like, because of the classes yeah. I was taking, the people that were in the class with me were really, really like focusing on the same stuff. Or they weren't, they were kind of just trying it out, but it was just really, really good people. And yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. And then I, I'm really enjoying the people that I work with at the at the hospital right now. So. Ooh, this, is, this is gonna be more for you. Okay. Well, uh, first part, I guess, I mean, do you find, oh, well, actually this is for you here, this one right here. Read it out loud and... Do you find his passion for music attractive? And if y'all had to decide one song to each other, what would it be? Or dedicate one song to each other? Um, so I think we... Okay, starting she with the first find me question. Attractive. <laughs> I find him incredibly attractive. And before we started dating, when we started talking about our interests in music, um, he literally was like scrolling through his phone, like with his list of songs that he had on his phone. And I was like, oh, I like that artist. And I like that music. And I like that song and stuff like that. And it was really exciting to be like, oh, we have this in common. But as far as like, oh, he's a passion for music and he like reacts to music. And like, I enjoy EDM's music. I enjoy The Weeknd. I enjoy J. Cole. I enjoy like all of the songs that he enjoys. I also enjoy. But then I enjoy like all the music and he is kind of like, oh, like that music that you listen to is crap. And and that song is like really dumb. It and I'm just dumb. like, no, like I like all of it. And so he's more critical of my music and I just love all of his music. But I think the music he enjoys, he has like a different kind of enjoyment for it than I get out of music. And so it's something that I don't necessarily understand. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't necessarily find that part of him attractive. I find that he's ambitious, that's attractive. Um, I find other people that don't have like a passion and they're like, oh, you know, like I'll just do whatever life throws at me. I'm kind of like, really? Like, you don't have anything that you want to like work towards ever? And he's definitely driven and that's attractive. It's not necessarily the fact that what he's driven for is what I, you know, find makes him attractive. See, I thought the question was more like, do you just find the fact that I'm so passionate in my music attractive? 
I mean, I, I find that you're passionate, that's attractive. Okay. In the music part, that doesn't matter to me. Okay. You know, obviously if you're passionate about something that was really, really awful, I wouldn't like that. But for the most part, you know, you're passionate about something good, it doesn't matter what that good thing is. I'm good vibes only. That's what I'm passionate about. <laughs> okay, dedicating a song to each other. Okay, we decided that um, Good Vibrations uh, by Slander. Yeah, is definitely like like when we get married. That's the song after we say like our I do's. We want that song to play as we like walk down the aisle together to like you know end the ceremony. Um, but if we like actually dedicating a song to each other, I don't really know. Like that seems like our song. And there's so many other songs that I feel like are our songs because I never listened to them with anybody else or he showed them to me. And so I think about him every time I hear them. But I don't know if I like if I had to pick one song to dedicate to you. I don't think I have. I don't know what it was. I mean, we started when we first started dating, it was what was it, location? See that's that's the funny thing is he remembers it being one song. I remember it being a different it song. Up. We met up and it, like we'd both gotten off work yeah. and he like mm -hmm. played this Good song location. and we like kind of danced yeah. outside in the dark together a little bit before we went inside and it was really sweet. But he played Talk by okay. Khalid, yeah, but he talk. remembers playing Location by Khalid. And so then it's kind of like we can't pick the same song because we don't even have the same memories. It's both. No, I think it was talk. It was talk. Yeah, but send me your location or location is really good too. Yeah, but you it's always say it's location and that's not the one well, I played. Okay. In that moment. moment. I do remember that moment though. Like when I got off work, I got out of my car and you met me like more than halfway on the street. Yeah. And I was singing to this song and then I got played it and danced a bit on the street. I do remember that was I walked with him on the street. Yeah, yeah. I remember that, don't get me wrong. I know. Um I know the song that I dedicate, which, oh god, I, I forget the name of the song and how it goes, but there is a song, and it's like, uh, you can tell me a thousand times, like, I'll keep listening or I'll keep remembering, it's gonna be the song, forgot how it goes, but it's, a, it's, I mean, it's a song that I dedicate to you. It's hard because the lyrics to music is so important to him, like, the words have to be spot on and that it's an excellent song. Debatable. I personally... No, it's more like if if I can pull something that relates to my life, mm -hmm. or not even my life, my feelings, then it's a great song to me. Even if like the rest is like decent, but then that one part, mm -hmm. I love it. I I don't care quite as much about the lyrics. I like it when there are lyrics to a song and it's not just instrumentals, but it's the it's like the tune and the like you know the musical part of it more. The feeling that comes from that, that's what I love about a song. And that's what makes a song really great for me is the like the, the sound with yeah. it, not necessarily the actual words being said. Maybe that's why I love EDM so much, because like the lyrics are usually good, but it's more of the voice or the the feeling of the actual sounds. Because I love that too. I mean, that's why I love EDM so much. That's why you can take a song that might sound like absolute trash, but then there's a one part. Like I love like when somebody elongates and it's like like yeah, elongates yeah. it, I fucking love that. No, shit. I love that too. Um, or like when they add some like eerie tones to it, I love it. Like I don't know, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's different. Um, why wouldn't you stream together with your girlfriend? Is that a possibility? We've done it before. The problem is I get we haven't streamed. We only oh, did record videos, right. yeah. It's just, we right. did Pokemon Sword and Shield, or oh, a couple episodes. You guys can watch that on the channel. I wouldn't mind streaming. Uh, I could easily make a setup too where I have the camera on me and the other camera I have on you, yeah. and we could be playing like Mario Kart or something like that. Oh, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I was like, I don't, I don't do COD. She's not competitive. I'm not, no, not at all. I would so much rather just be on your team and like, you know, help you succeed. I'm a competitive asshole. I don't want to actually defeat you. I want to kill. I want to murder. No. Mag and mad when I don't murder. Yeah. Um, He's no. a bad loser and a bad winner. True, because I don't feel like I earn it sometimes, yeah. but then I do win. I'm like, wait, I can be better. Or he rubs it in your face. Kind of. Yeah. Like, but it's fine. It, it's not like it's offensive. It's just, you know, intense. Um, yeah, but if it was like Mario Kart or something like that, like I could play that. I just, I'm not like a, I used to play Call of Duty with my older brother when I was like On the DS. You know, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Like okay. 
You're right. It's completely different. It's completely, different. completely different. But we would play like yeah. shooting games with each other. But then I just like kind of stopped enjoying it. That'd be insane. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I never win. I just liked playing with my brother because I liked playing with my brother. But I just I don't enjoy it quite as much anymore. And I'd much rather play something like Mario. All right. Uh, what's what did you first hear EDM? Oh wait. What started you hearing EDM or listening to EDM? What is your girlfriend's favorite music genre and your guys' favorite artist? So, fun fact, me and my friend Joe, he's in the military, he should be coming back this month actually. We worked out in high school um, a lot and we were getting bored of listening to the same music. So we made a Pandora mix of Turn Me On by Nicki Minaj and David Guetta. You know, come on, turn me on. You know what I'm talking about? Um, and then when that happened, obviously with Pandora, it plays different music. And then we heard uh, it was a Skrillex song. I forgot which one it was, but it was, no. No, it was Showtech Bang or something like that. And um, and that was that's when we started listening to EDM more heavily, was listening to Pandora while working out. Favorite genre and or artist? Um, you can't answer that, can you? I Jeez. can. Yeah? Um, I like, like my favorite genre is probably pop. Like pop with a little rap in it, um, which yeah, it's basically what you hear on the radio on the popular radio stations nowadays. Like that's the kind of music I really enjoy. Um, I love EDM. I first listened to EDM when it, well, it was like electric swing music, not necessarily just like dance music. Um, and my older brother showed it to me when I was in high school. And I just knew one song and I really liked it, but I didn't realize it was kind of like its own music genre. And then I showed it to him because we worked together at that point and he was talking about like music like that. And I was like, oh, Truman, like you'd like this song then. And he was like, yeah, I like this song. And that was the end of the conversation. Um, and then other than that one song, I hadn't heard any EDM music that I knew was EDM music until he showed it. Because you knew it, because you knew some Galantis songs. Well, there's some pop you knew music some too songs. that's like pop artists, yeah. but some EDM artists did the music Produced part, it. Yeah. but then they sang with it, and so I knew those songs because yeah. I knew the pop artists, but I didn't need yeah. it. Like Atlanta, you knew some Millennium stuff that was written on the radio. Mm -hmm. Galantis, I'm pretty sure you said you've heard a couple of Galantis songs when so. we first started. I think so. I don't quite remember. Or uh, Martin Garrix with Baby Rexa and the name of Love. Right. I know her. Yeah. I didn't know um, who he was. Boy, and I was like, there's no other singer to this I got, song. Do so I, I got so salty with that. I'm like, person. wait, you with Martin Garrix? She's like, no, no, with this thing. I'm like, made by Martin Garrix. <laughs> like, who's that? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. We've, we've had a lot of that. When she's like, oh, it's this person. I'm like, well, no, technically it's this person. Yeah. Um. Okay. Our like both our favorite artists combined? I would probably just say like J. Cole. My, my two favorite combined. Like well, who we both like oh. the same, like what we listen to the most yeah. together. Well we we both love the weekend. Yeah. That's like definitely one of his top artists. I know J. Cole is also in Martin Garrix. Yeah, but we both really like the weekend because the weekend is like pop, but it's also like R and B. It's also like he's just amazing. All right. So, yeah, really, really talented. And then, yeah. I take Travis Scott to dinner too. And that's their steak. He paid for it. But I order it, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I definitely think. Uh, the thing is, nowadays, I just listen to a lot of live sets. So, like. Which is fine. You can't really pick one artist because, you know, obviously, a lot of the live sets are what they created but also remixed by other people that they add together so that that's what that's he what really happens. like slander when he plays the don't live say that and... they don't like slander you think they're overrated mm. what if you, you ever reached that slander's overrated no, not good i didn't know slander existed until he showed it to me so i don't know how it could be overrated if it's not even popular enough that like like none of my friends would know what slander or who slander was like He's the only person I know that knows what it is. So if it's not that popular, I don't know how it can be that overrated. But they're good. What's my favorite song that I reacted to? I don't know. I, okay, your favorite, my favorite song that you reacted to. I mean, you reacted to a lot of them that I really, really enjoy. And I kind of overplay them. And then I don't like them as much anymore. Yeah. 
Um, but oh, my my favorite probably right now is I don't know if I can remember what it's called, but it's like uh I could sing it, but I don't want to sing it. Sing it. Uh uh. <laughs> just a little bit. Whisper in my ear. Okay. No. Come on. I'm just gonna look it up. Wait. What? <laughs> Wait. No, okay, so while she is going to do that, right now, probably my favorite song that I've reacted to at this moment, just thinking of them, is the one I dedicated my mom oh, for. Oh, yeah, that was good. Um, just because, you know, it is true that <clears throat> she kind of was the one that helped me grow up, obviously. She's my biggest supporter. I mean, before I even hit 100 subs, she was in her job telling her coworkers to subscribe to me so I could have... I could hit 100 subs. Um, other songs, which have to be like those heavier songs, one that really meant a lot to me. Um, Behind My Eyes by Apache? Yeah. I don't remember. It's the one that was like kind of like Billie Eilish kind of style, but. Did I, did I react to this? Yep. Really? Yeah, I thought it was really cool. So, so this song. Oh. Yeah, see, I just don't, like, it was a good song, but, uh, I mean, one song that I didn't react to. Also, Love Me Right. That's Yuppie a good song. Yes. That was a great one. Yuppie Cole, Love Me Right, she loved that song. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite songs ever would have to be, like, this is off topic, but my favorite song, one of them ever, would have to be, uh, Galantis, um, Fuck, what is it called? Help Me, Help Me, what is it called? Oh, um. Uh, it, uh, You and I. You and I by Glanches is probably one of my top of top ten, top five favorite song ever. I get I think like out of out of our top ten favorite shared songs together, three of them would probably be from Galantis. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like you like more of the newer Galantis. And I like the older glances a lot more than newer. It was like stuff that you would play. Well, yeah, which is newer, which I love. Yeah. But older glances, I just did it some hit different. Yeah. Hit different. When we first got together, there was a lot of driving in the car together, and he would always be the DJ. And so we'd listen to a lot of his music, and I'd really get into it. So whenever I hear a lot of those songs, it reminds me of when we like first got together. So I have a lot of really fond memories with a lot of those songs. You played a lot of Galantis when we first got together. True. Um, I mean, this is the last one. I don't know why it's so heavy. Why do we exist? <sighs> so you're gonna get her part, and then you're gonna get my part of why why do we I exist. Why do I have to go first? Because mine's gonna be a lot more heavy, probably. Maybe. Okay. Um, yeah. why do we exist? Like, this isn't like personal for you and me. This is just like in general, why do people exist? Yes. Um, I mean, we could get all philosophical and I could tell you what my perspective is on like what happens when we die and Too all deep. of that. Too deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of made it up. So it's kind of like a collage of all these different people's ideas of what I think. And I, eh. Um, I just think that right now, why do we exist? Um, you don't have to answer. But I have like an idea, I just don't know how to say it. And I know <laughs> I've, I've asked this question to myself, obviously, like time to many, get, many times. Time to get true pair like, in here, I'll go yeah, first. Please go. All right, why do we exist? My biggest pet pet peeve, my biggest pet peeve, is seeing people that have potential and don't follow it. The reason why we exist is not solely based off of the people we hang out with, the people that we grew up with, and or the things that we want. The reason why we exist as human beings is to show our inner and actual strength that we have within ourselves, and something people don't understand that. People would rather live their life, you know, being... Like she said, being with no motivation, no nothing. And then those are the people that ask, why do we exist? And they don't have an answer. You have to be strict with it. And the reason why we exist is, I mean, simple as in, as a whole is to grow, is to, uh, what is it called? Um, like, you know, like with scientific stuff and stuff like that, grow, uh, uh, 
yes, evolve. Evolve, grow, whatever you want. If you think about it, the past 10 years of our evolution as humans and growing in technology what has been years ahead of what we did 30 years ago and stuff like that. And if people actually understood the reason why we existed, as in the fact that we are here to live our dreams and to live the way we want to live, and I'm not talking about killing people. I know some people want to do that, but don't do that. It's not okay. Um, but we exist simply because we we have the right to, we have the resources to, we have the will to, we have the motivation to, we have just I mean, we exist because we want to. I mean, even, even if you think and even if you say you don't want to exist, well, you're here to so make the best of it. Mm -hmm. Grow with it. Roll with it. Run with it. You know, take baby steps with it. We all exist because we, we just do. We, we're here because we're here. It's a basic formality of just, I mean, your mama gave birth to you. Your, your dad did things with your mama and you were birthed. So don't fucking let it ruin. Isn't it like some typical fact that there's like one in like a hundred thousand chance that you're actually born? Like yourself? Like, like, I mean, and so many, I look so all the spurts that we think about it. We only one of those. Just don't take it for granted. You're one sperm, the sea of sperms. No? <laughs> really give the guy all the credit. I mean, what? <laughs> Not all the credit. Obviously the egg and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think what I keep getting tripped up with uh, the question, why do we exist? It makes me think the question is really asking like, uh, like not necessarily like what do we do now that we exist but like why do we exist like why, how were we created or something like that which is very different kind of question yeah. but if you were to ask like what's the point to our existing now I think like how when I was younger I was you know depressed and suicidal and stuff like that we both had our times when we went through that but my like biggest fear was that I would never amount to anything um and the reason why I like, you know, you know, I like wanted to kill myself and I was suicidal and stuff, but then it was kind of like I could hold myself back from doing it because I, I reminded myself like, you know, if your biggest fear is that you won't amount to anything, if you end your life now, then you definitely won't amount to anything. So you have to just like, you know, maybe you don't know what your purpose is now in life, but eventually you'll probably find it and you've just got to keep living until you find it until you can like live to your goal potential so yeah what do you do to be able to i don't know see how far we it, can go yeah because it's not even the fact that it's like a i want to be a billionaire or something like that it, it's down to the basics of personal success and personal success is different for everyone. Yeah. Personal success could be, I want to live on a farm and have own my own house one day. Well then do it. Right now you live in an urban city in California or something, you live in San Francisco. Well, get a job, save up, stock market, do smart business, one day move to Oregon. Like, People just don't understand personal growth is super important in life. Yeah. And I say this all the time. You're your biggest block and your biggest supporter when you're trying to do your own dreams. No one else can hold your hand through your own dreams. No one can give you the answers for everything to make it to your dreams. That's true. They can guide you in a way, but yeah. they can't. Well, and the kind of people you surround yourself with can give you the kind of like energy and perspective change that you need to necessarily like. Yeah, but then you will also, if you're stronger. Yeah, and I agree. But then it's still up to you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You can have a thousand people saying, oh my God, you're the best person ever. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And then you wake up one day and you feel like you don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do at that moment? Are you going to do it or are you not? Right. You are your biggest supporter. 
So the video cut off, I just wanted to let you know, and that is going to be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. I am going to invest in a microphone for the camera. And if you guys want to see more Q&As or more stuff with Elena, let me know. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, morning, and night.